Grace and peace, love and mercy from God our Father, through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. I'm Pastor Clint Poppy, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. Thank you for tuning in once again to our video daily devotions. Today, we hear the intro it for a special celebration that we'll be having tomorrow night during the divine service. The Visitation is a minor festival. It is celebrated on July 2nd on the church's calendar, and we are moving this feast, transferring it to Wednesday evening worship tomorrow night. The intro for the visitation goes like this. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God's my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many have just recently completed a holiday weekend, perhaps a three or a four or even a five day holiday weekend. Did you visit anyone? Did anyone come to visit you? It's kind of a holiday tradition, isn't it? Especially on a holiday like the 4th of July. You, you go, you visit, you watch fireworks, you barbecue, you watch baseball, you have family gatherings. Visiting is a natural part of life and generally visits call for a celebration. The visitation that we are thinking about and we are celebrating here is the visit of Mary to see Elizabeth. Elizabeth, who is already six months pregnant, six months great with child, John the Baptist forming in her womb. Mary has just heard from the angel Gabriel that she will be the very mother of God because God has chosen her to bear the Savior of the world. It's an amazing visitation. We have the recorded dialogue back and forth and Mary's song, the Magnificat. So much celebration in this particular visitation. My friends, this visitation reminds us of a visitation that most of us have grown accustomed to. Maybe we're even ignorant of it or certainly apathetic of it. I'm talking about the way God visits his people. That's a wonderful way of talking about the incarnation. When God took on flesh and made his dwelling among us. God in the flesh, in the womb of Mary. God in the flesh, born for us and for our salvation. God in the flesh, putting himself under the law, the Ten Commandments that, that condemn each of us. But God in the flesh, fulfilling them for the entire world. God in the flesh, taking the sin of the world into and onto his sinless body all the way to Calvary's cross. God in the flesh, dying 
for the life of the world. God in the flesh rising from the dead on that first Easter Sunday. God in the flesh ascended to the right hand of God 40 days later. For far too many people, that's the end of the story. But my friends, God continues to visit his people. God continues to visit you. He does this by the power of the Holy Spirit through word and sacrament. Every time someone is baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God is visiting his people. Every time the word of God is read or preached or taught in its truth and purity, God is visiting his people. Every time we eat and drink Christ's body and blood according to his promise and command, God is visiting his people. Every time you hear the sweet words of the absolution that your sins are absolutely forgiven on account of Jesus, God is visiting his people. My friends, this isn't some generic or esoteric visitation. It is a real visitation, a tangible visitation for you. My friends, that's why we long to be in God's house. That's why we long to hear his word. That's why we long to feast at his meal. It's worthy of a celebration. Why? Because God is visiting us, his people. He's visiting us with forgiveness, life, and salvation. My friends, this joy, this celebration knows no end. Thanks be to God. Amen.